Good morning. It's good to be able to share with you this morning, and I trust you have a wonderful day. I'm Andy Spohr, and I'm glad to share with you today, and we thank Fran McNeil for playing the piano for us this morning. I have a question for you this morning. Are you a decaffeinated Christian? Let me share a little story with you. An experience I had about 45 years ago, my wife and I <clears throat> went to the local uh, diner in town with a couple from our church to eat supper, and we had supper, and the gentleman and I had coffee with our meals, and after we finished eating, we talked for quite a while. And as we talked, the waitress came by a number of times refilling our coffee cups, and <clears throat> we talked. There were some stress issues at church we talked about and shared concern about, and probably, I don't know, I don't remember, I didn't count, but probably eight or ten cups of coffee later we went home and that night I did not sleep so well. I was awake a lot and I don't know if it was the <clears throat> problems at church or the amount of coffee and caffeine that kept me awake but I decided that I would not take a chance so since then, I have not knowingly drank coffee <clears throat> with caffeine after noon or two o'clock in the afternoon <clears throat> because I want to honor the fact that my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and I want to get the rest I need so that I can serve God well. Now, <clears throat> whether we drink caffeinated coffee or not, that isn't really the issue. We need rest. And we know the admonition we find in Philippians chapter 4. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So we learn to pray and then sleep as we experience the peace of God. But we also remember the words of the Apostle Paul. In Romans chapter 9, he says, I speak the truth in Christ. I'm not lying. My conscience, con conscience confirms it in the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, those of my own race, the people of Israel. And in the very next chapter, he writes, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. Great sorrow, anguish in heart. This sounds like it kept him awake at night at times. Or remember Jesus weeping over the city of Jerusalem in Acts 19 and uh, in Luke 19 and Luke 13. Jesus said, if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace. And then he said, how often I have longed to gather you, to your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. There were things that caused anguish to the heart of the Apostle Paul that caused Jesus to weep. So I believe we need to have a balance 
between being anxious for nothing on the one hand and weeping over the kinds of things that break the heart of Jesus. I'm suggesting that what I call a decaffeinated Christian doesn't lose sleep over the things that break the heart of Jesus. Nothing of eternal significance keeps a decaffeinated Christian awake. Last year, when Russia invaded Ukraine, I had restless sleep as I prayed for the Christians and the innocent civilians who were being hit by bombs and missiles as they fell from the sky. I was a caffeinated Christian, if you will, concerned for them. Should I not be troubled about the suffering going on today in Ukraine and Myanmar, in Sudan and other places of the world? Should I not be troubled about our daughter who is not walking with God? Should we not be troubled about the weakened state of churches in the United States? The heart of Jesus must break at the number of pastors who are addicted to pornography or the fact that there are so many uh, broken homes in the lives of confessing Christians and child abuse. I believe we should be troubled about the church not being salt and light as we ought to be. This must break the heart of Jesus. So I look again at Philippians 4 and read again. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and pet petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's verse 6 and 7. But notice what verse 4 and 5, just before he says, be anxious for nothing, God says, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. We rejoice in the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. And we balance that with prayer and petitions for things that break the heart of God. A decaffeinated Christian is not at all troubled about the things that break the heart of Jesus. Nothing eternally significant keeps him awake. When we see evil in our world, we need to be troubled and pray. Our heart's desire needs to be like Paul's, that people be saved. And then we share these concerns with our gracious, all-powerful God and enjoy his peace. I don't, and God doesn't, want a bunch of us here at Landis Homes to get sick from lack of sleep. But we can have an impact on the suffering caused by evil. James 5.16 says, the prayers of a righteous man is powerful and effective. So we balanced heartfelt concern, anguish, grief, tears for the suffering in our world, the things that break the heart of Jesus. We balanced that with the peace of God that goes beyond human comprehension as we take these concerns, these <clears throat> issues that break the heart of Jesus, as we take these concerns to God. Not careless, 
decaffeinated Christians with no concerns for suffering, but peaceful Christians, joyful Christians, who know how to take our burdens to the Lord and live in peace. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we praise you for your power and might. We praise you for your heart that breaks for the suffering of people in the world because of sin and evil. May we share that concern. May we faithfully pray. And may we <clears throat> be joyful and peaceful without anxiousness and worry because we present our requests to you. May we honor you today as we apply these truths. We pray in Jesus' name, amen.